41 people so far. And I think we are live on the Frugal Crafter YouTube channel. I'm Lindsay, the Frugal Crafter, and I have Sarah here with me. Hi! And today we are going to do some mixed media painting. We're actually going to start with acrylics, which is kind of unusual for me. Uh, but I want to have fun. I want to play with supplies. And I hope you guys are up for that uh, kind of crazy random um, challenge. But I will put everything that I've used. Uh, some of these things are going to be older and they might not be available anymore. But if they are available, I will link them up in the uh, video description and on my blog. Um, so either way, you know, at least you'll know what they are, even if they're not available anymore. And you can make a substitution or I'll try to find substitutions. Um, if you have any questions as we go along, and I'll open up questions to any of these products we're working with, because it wouldn't make sense to have watercolor questions when we're <laughs> using paints and stamps and pastels and things like that. So um, just type your, your word question in all caps, and um, and just then type your, your question with regular upper and lowercase. If there's a moderator there that knows the answer, they can help you, great. If not, Sarah will relay it to me, and we'll make sure you guys understand what we're working on. Anything to add? Uh, that sounds good. Okay. Oh, one more thing. I have some space left in my roses workshop at, uh, in West Springfield on June 1st, if anybody's in the area and wants to learn how to play some, uh, paint some loose watercolors. Um, there are some spots open in the roses workshop and there's a link in the video description if you are local to Massachusetts area and you want to come paint with me. Or if you're going to the stamp show that weekend, the heirloom production show, I'd love to meet you. Uh, so just make sure you say hi if you see me there. Um, so we're just going to get right into it. I'll explain products as we go because I'm not entirely sure everything that I'm going to use today. I've got a big pad of palette paper here, so if I do need to mix some stuff out, I can. Um, I've also got a craft mat underneath. And the reason I like to use palette paper is because um, you can go through so much water cleaning up like a craft sheet if you're using that as a palette that I think it's a little bit more environmentally friendly to use like a, a palette paper if you've got a big project to do. If you're just doing something little, it's... You know, it doesn't really matter. I've got some Liquitex heavy body acrylics here. Um, and if I'm going to use water uh, acrylics, then that's generally what I choose as my favorite. This so hasn't been used for a while, so I had some dry paint on the edge there. And I'm just basically putting down some colors that I know that I'm going to use in my focal point later. Or I plan to anyway. We won't really know what's going to happen, but that's, that's the plan. And I'm just putting them right on the canvas because... Um, because might as well. I mean, I'm going to be swishing this all around. I'm working on a birch panel, and I don't know if I saved a little thing for it, but it's from Jerry's Artorama. It's a Da Vinci panel, and oh, here, here's a little label if you're looking for it. It's not primed, so this that's another reason I'm starting off with acrylics, because I can seal this panel and kind of get it primed with my acrylic paint. So that's what that looks like. Da Vinci Pro Panel 11 by 14 Birch. These also come primed in a variety of substances depending on what media you work in. So if you don't want to prime your own, you can get them pre-primed. Um, Jerry's is not sponsoring this video, but I have worked with them, with them in the past just for full disclosure. And I'm wetting my sponge and wringing it out. You always want to do that when you're going to use a sponge so that you don't end up ruining your sponge. And I've had these for like 20 years, so they will last. I'm just going to rock it in the paint and cover my canvas, or my panel, I should say. You have any questions so far? Mm -mm. I'm looking for some muted tones, some neutrals, but I, I like to use those colors that I plan on using just to make sure everything's going to match well, look nice together. rub on the paint, you can you can blot it on. I'm going to see if I can keep my edges clear so I don't have to do anything to it, but if they get smudgy then I'll just paint them a solid color after I'm all done. And please feel free to substitute with whatever you have at home because it's probably going to be uh, tricky to get every single identical thing that I have. modeled background. The hot mess stage. We're going to have a lot of hot mess stages today, I think. I 
How many people? 226. Nice. I'm gonna pouncing and twisting to kind of get a little bit of a texture and just make sure I cover everything. And I'm just gonna keep pouncing and mixing until I've got it to kind of the neutralized state that I want. I think maybe add a little metallic in there. You could slide the board down just a little bit. Oh it yeah, it's top. running away on me. Yeah, there. it's sliding around. And I'm gonna grab some gold, and I am gonna put that on my palette because I don't want. I, at this point, I just want to kind of add some accents. So I'm gonna pick up the gold with my sponge by pouncing up and down on my palette, and then I'm just gonna add some gold here and there. Uh, Lynn Justice, how do you store your brushes? Um, I got them in cups and bins like that, just sitting on a table. Nothing too fancy, but sometimes you can find some really cute cups at like thrift shops and stuff. We got a piece of paper in there, a little sliver of paper. Um, I like that gold. I'm going to do a little bit more. The gold is uh, Jane Davenport paint. Her paints are nice and matte. I do have a matte finish spray handy because I do plan on doing some pastel and I'll need to make sure I have a nice matte finish to work on. And I think I want to maybe darken stuff down a little bit at the bottom. I'm going to take some of the, my hands are slippery from all the paint. I'm going to take a little bit of my violet here. This is, um, oh, these, I haven't gotten to these paints for a while, so I've got this dry paint on the cap. I shouldn't open that over my thing. Um, that is Prism Violet, and I'm going to grab a little bit of Alizarin Crimson and a little bit of, um, I'm going to use, probably use Burnt Umber, I think. And acrylic paint, some people say don't mix brands, but I've never had a problem mixing brands. Uh, Rose Tone, what is your opinion about Basics Acrylic? Um... You know, it's by Liquitex. They're a reputable brand. I prefer the heavy body. I feel like you get more for your money with the heavy body paint because you don't have to, it goes a lot further um, and it has a longer shelf life, but um, you know, not all stores will have it. So use what's, you know, what's available for you. And by adding this dark towards the bottom, it's just going to kind of ground it a little bit. I can add a little bit of a frame. And when you add the color, so if you add it, you get kind of some big blobs, and then just kind of keep pouncing and rocking over that area until you get it to fade out the way you want. This paint should dry pretty quickly. Um, it might dry a little bit slower for me than it might for you if you live like in Arizona or California or someplace where it's just warmer. I'm just going to do a little bit up in the corners to finish that framing look. I apologize for the noise. I didn't realize this was going to be so heavy, but I mean so wiggly. But what I did before I started painting is I put a sawtooth hook in the back because um, I can, that way I can hang it up to enjoy it and while it dries. And I don't have to like worry about messing stick it that point. under so it's oh, less that, wiggly. That might help. I don't know if we might, we'll have it from sliding around, but a little less wiggly. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I think it will. Okay. Good thinking. Yeah, a little bit more dark down there. Now, I think that color would also be great for some stenciling. I have a variety of different stencils here. I have some, some paper ones. These paper ones are by Faber-Castell, and they come in 10 packs. They also make some 12 by 12 stencils, uh, but the scale on those are really big, so I haven't, I, I got a set of those, and I haven't really found many uses for them, but the I love their little ones because there's so many fun ways to use them, and this was one that had a bunch of different um, quotes and things on it, and this one says like, hello, bonjour, there's some numbers. Um, I just think it's kind of fun. So I think I'm going to use this little uh, number one here. 
in a couple places and just kind of stencil on some purple. And I like to use a cosmetic sponge for that. You now with these paper stencils, um, when you are using them, don't try to clean them off. Um, when you're using acrylics because that coating of acrylic you get on there will actually make your stencil more like a paper, more like a plastic stencil and it will help it last longer. So I'm just going to take that purple color. Oh, I don't know. I'm still wiggling. I probably should have got like, um, I don't know, like a, I have an old rag or something. Oh, I've got a rag right here. I'm going to put this rag under there. help actually. Hopefully I didn't move my stencil. <laughs> and when I use stencil, I generally, if I'm just doing something like a background for a mixed media piece, I will do very hit or miss stenciling. I won't try to like fill everything in really, um, really full unless I know that I'm trying to like highlight something like I really want it to show. I like a lot of these kind of like fading into the mist looks. It's like that. So we have some you know, some boldness, and then we have, have it just kind of fading off here and there. I'll do the same over here because um, when it, if you're ever doing mixed media or maybe collage or scrapbooking and it just looks like you just sneezed up a bunch of supplies on your paper, um, it's usually because you don't have repetition. You have a lot of different interesting textures and um, medias and colors, but without repetition, things get really chaotic. So by just using the stencil a couple times in different places on the um, canvas, I'm going to have um, I'm going to have a better look because I'm going to get that repetition in there. I hope I don't talk too fast. I kind of feel like how I like normally create if I'm not doing a video and I just kind of charge ahead. Uh, let's see. The next thing I want to do, I've used this one before on a live stream. Um, you guys might remember this. Um, it was a painting I really liked, but I sold it right away. So I kind of like <laughs> missed it. So I thought, oh, I'm going to do something else. And this one I'm going to keep and I want to use a stencil again. And this one is from Deco, uh, Deco Art Americana Decor. And it's like a, like a cafe sign. And I'm going to do that. It looks like I used copper before and I remember really liking that. So I'm going to use a mixture of raw umber and copper. Put it right on my palette there and I'll use a cosmetic sponge again to apply it. Now this time I want to be fairly, um, uh, I want to make sure I coat it well. I don't want to be hit or miss. I want that to show up. Even though I'll be painting over that, I still like whatever shows through to show through, to be clear anyway. This does have lineup guides if you want to use them. Um, so actually it looks like they're just about perfectly at 11. And this is an 11 by 14. I think it's about like 11 by 11. So I'll just line up those little markers and I know I'm going to have it level. So here that works out. And I'm mixing my colors right there with my sponge. Just want to make sure I don't have any big gobs on there. So I'm going to tap it off and make sure that there's no, um, no peaky paint. I want it nice and flat and I'm just going to pounce it through my stencil. Now, when you're doing acrylic paints, you can clean off your stencils if that bothers you. I only clean them if they're really chunky. If they're just a thin coating, I don't bother. Do you clean your stencils, Sarah, or do you leave them chunky? Uh, it depends on what, like, how much paint. Like, when I'm done with them, I am like, well, ah, there's just a little paint, but if it looks like it's going to dry pretty chunky, mm -hmm. I'll just run it under some warm water with my hands just yeah. to at least get, and then air dry. So my stencils all have paint. I just, if it's gonna, it looks like it's gonna dry real thick, I'll just do a quick rinse off. Yeah, me too. If I think it's gonna affect the next thing I do, then I'll clean it. But if I don't think it's gonna affect. Yeah, I don't. <clears throat> I do clean them if I'm using spray ink because that doesn't dry properly. So mm. if I go over it again, then whatever I use before will smear <laughs> on to my next project. Of course, it could be a nice surprise. I, it could be, a, it could turn out to be something really awesome. Chances However, are, though. If, you if you're trying to do a specific thing in mind and not just playing around, that yeah. could... <laughs> hmm, I don't remember getting That's yellow. What? I didn't want any yellow, and now it's <laughs> mostly yellow. That's weird. The yellow mixes in with a color you've mixed perfectly and throws it all off. Yeah. Gosh, I never realized how long it takes you to stencil something until you're doing it live on camera. <laughs> interesting to see what we can pull together in an hour. Oh, 
We're almost there, guys. Oh, people are loving it. And where do you get your makeup sponges? I get them at the Dollar Tree. It's hard to beat the price. You get like a bag of, oh, I don't know if it's, I don't think it's 100, but it's maybe 50. I was going to say that sounds right. And you can wash them out if they're not, like, if they don't get too bad. Or a lot of, sometimes I'll, I'll just stamp from the bottom and I'll just snip it off. Snip off that bottom used part and keep mm. on using. Oh, there. I got a really nice, um, a really nice impression there. I'm going to set that stencil aside so I don't get that paint on anything else. And um, I think maybe I'll just use this little doily. This is kind of sweet. I'll do this little doily a few places. Um, and I think I'll just mix up some light pink and use that crimson that I used before and a little bit of white. Don't need too much here. This paint right here that I have in the bottle, this is, um, I've only used this one color of this brand, but it's called Chromacryl. It's actually a student grade um, acrylic, but it, the color is block out white and that stuff is fantastic. It's such an opaque white. So if you're you know, refilling pens or you're um, you know, you just need some white to touch up some paintings or just as a primer. It's such a useful color. Um, it's kind of expensive on Amazon. I think I got mine, um, either from Jerry's or Blick. It was, it was, a one of the bigger art supply stores. Um, but it was way cheaper on those, on that site and it just lasts forever. I'm just going to do a little bit of this. Now it almost looks white because of that white I added. That block out white is really strong too. So you can see that first layer we put down really doesn't isn't much to worry about because we're gonna we're adding so much to it and I'm not I'm going really gently I'm not adding a lot of color here I just want little hints of color oh that's kind of pretty I don't think I'll go over the edge again though because I think that that um, I don't like the look of that so much and again we're gonna repeat it really, really softly. And maybe one more time. We can do some, we can actually stencil over this, but not stencil where the words are, just kind of go around where the words are a little bit. And when you stencil, your paint dries really fast too. So you just got a little bit of hint in there. Maybe a little bit more though, that's not. I'm gonna see if I can line that back up because I feel like I wanted a little bit more in there. So the stenciling is very versatile. You don't have to do it, you know, in a particular order. You can sneak stuff back in, sneak designs in and around. It's funny, this crimson here, it doesn't, it looks really pink when you have a full strength, but once you dilute it with some white, it almost gets like a, a bloody orange undertone. I wonder if it's a traditional old lizard crimson. Uh, Jules, can you use a kitchen sponge without the scrubby or sea sponges instead of the makeup ones? For the stenciling, I would recommend that you use either a stencil brush or a makeup sponge um, because you'll pick up a lot more. These are so dense that you're not going to pick up as much stuff as you would with a kitchen or a sea sponge. So that's why I would recommend that. Um, you, of course, can you can experiment. You might find a technique you really like, but these are so inexpensive and they uh, they just work so well that that's what I recommend. I'm not sure if I'm crazy about that in the middle, but I'm not going to worry about it because we're going to be painting stuff on top. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and sketch the. Um, I'll just actually just bring it over so you can see. I saw this picture online on Unsplash and I thought it was really pretty. So I thought we could sketch that or at least sketch the vase, uh, the the kind of tin pail, tin watering can that's in and put that here and then we could add some flowers to it and i'm just going to use a watercolor pencil to sketch and i'm going to start i don't know if it's going to show up and i'm going through wet paint so i might have to stop and dry it actually i better do that because i'm just scraping the paint at this point which if that's what the look you're going for oh yeah yeah definitely Actually, though, I have water-soluble pastels. That would work. Those would work great to sketch on with, and maybe I'll even paint for those. Look at it. Just ideas are flowing. Because you ideas put out all sorts of flowing. new That's things right. out and just throwing some stuff on the table. Yeah, I'm going to grab my Kringle ones because they work really well 
Um, and I know I have a nice bright white in there. I think these are the same as the Mungio brand, M-Y-G-N-O. Um, they're pearl ones are anyway. So if you want to try that, those are available at Jerry's or Amazon really inexpensively. Actually, the premium ones have gone down in price. I think they're, they were around $25, and I think they're less now. I think they're around 16 for the set. So getting my vase there, I'm going to get the little spout, and we're going to get the... This is actually working really well on this. It's gripping and everything, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and work with these because I, I plan on sealing whatever I do anyway. So, why That's not? right, people. You heard it. She said she will <laughs> be sealing. <laughs> so you should probably tell everyone what you'll use for a sealant. Well, I think I'm going to first use this matte finish. Um, and then after that sets, I'll probably use like a clear lacquer or... Uh, I'll see how that looks. If I feel like that matte finish is giving me protection, then I'll probably just leave it at that. If I feel like I need to have something else on there, then I would just... I would probably go with another spray on sealer. I don't use sealers too much, so I don't have too many that I recommend. I use Krylon Triple Thick a lot. I don't know if that's archival, um, because I use it for crafts and like coasters and things like that. Okay, now I bet these Prima, these, because the Primas are so trendy in their color choices and stuff that I think I can probably just, this color is awfully nice, we'll just use that. I also have some gelatos handy, so I'm going to be grabbing those because they're basically the same thing. And that's the thing. So many of your supplies are just, you know, duplicates with different names. So the only way you'll know it is if you play with them and then you'll start to kind of, uh, you'll start to see the similarities and it'll help you avoid buying duplicates or finding something again if your favorite company has stopped producing it, which happens a lot in the craft market. Right, I'm gonna go with a nice pale gelato. These are my favorite pastel. If you don't like to get your hands dirty, this is the product for you because it's got a plastic casing. They don't wear down too quickly, so if you're worried about the environmental impact, and I wonder if you might be able to even stick these uh, those other pastels in there once they run out. They look about the same size. These seem to be a little bit firmer than my pastels. I'm putting on a pretty thick though because I want to be able to blend it and paint with it. So don't worry if you get some funky chunky edges because you will be able to smooth them out with a wet paintbrush, and I'll show you that in a second. Now another color that looked kind of interesting in the pastel set was this dark gray. I typically don't use a gray, but I am saying yes to life today, so I'll use some of this dark gray for some shadows. And I'm going to grab a brush and start blending. So when I'm using um, a material like a watercolor crayon or water-soluble oil pastel, I want a brush that's not going to hold a lot of water, so I don't want my watercolor brushes for this. Um, watercolor brushes, wouldn't like that medium wouldn't really hurt your watercolor brushes, except for the fact that you need a little bit more um, push to manipulate it, so you might end up working your brushes too hard, and they're really just, watercolor brushes are a little too soft. Uh, if you're using a traditional watercolor brush to handle this. So I'm using a um, Golden Taclon brush. Any brand is fine. Um, I really like the Royal and Langnickel brand of Golden Taclon brushes, like their Zen All Media or their, Men their new Mentas. They have a, an All Media version as well as a watercolor version. I find them to be very inexpensive and just good quality. And they're easy to find at your big box stores if you don't like to order online. I want this to have a little more slant to it, so I'm going to reshape it while I paint it. Now I can use more water because I did put it on pretty thick. And if I feel like I'm not getting this to move enough, 
I can go with a stiffer brush, like a bristle brush that I might use um, for a thicker paint. Now with an acrylic background, if you wanted to use regular oils on top of that, you totally can. You can always, uh, it's the fat over lean rule, so um, you want to start off with your leanest layers. Acrylic, which should be your fastest drying layers, and acrylics dry very fast. And then you could, lean, you could go over it with, you know, greasier layers, which would be fatter, obviously. Um, or in like, you know, your more delicate, chunkier layers would be what you put last. And I can keep this, it's also kind of like gouache, these um, these water soluble oil pastels. So I can go back in and blend or add to it in the future. Unlike acrylics, it's not gonna stay, um, it's not gonna stay movable. Acrylics don't stay movable. This will stay movable until I seal it. gray in the center here. I'll probably have to darken that up, but we'll see what it looks like right off the bat. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna need a darker color. And, oh, this Prussian blue looks really dark. I'm gonna see what that looks like when I put that out. I think that's about right. Now coloring on a wet area here can be a little tricky because it, it would rather have a dry area to deposit color to, but you can kind of also blend in uh, a little easier when you go right onto the wet media. All right, I'm gonna start on some of the flowers while that's drying, and I think I also want to give this a place to kind of sit. I don't want to cover up all of the background, but I do want to give it a little bit of a shadow, so I'm going in with this Prussian blue, and this Prussian blue honestly looks kind of more like a Payne's Gray to me. So if you're working with another brand or you're using acrylic paints, try a Payne's Gray or take your Prussian Blue and add a little uh, burnt umber to it. Now if I want that to be kind of transparent and I wanna make sure I can see stuff through it, I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm just gonna scrape the extra water off. I'm not blotting it. And that's gonna have just enough water in there so I almost turn that into a wash. So I can see what's underneath and it's just gonna give me a little grounding shadow. How's everybody doing in chat? Any more questions? Uh, we're caught up for the moment. I'm learning about, there's a thing on the news about Laurel or Yannis. Oh, you haven't heard the Laurel Yannis like, debate yet? What? Well, it's funny, I first saw it, it was like, I usually watch the CBS uh, morning news and um, and they were talking about that because like half the anchors were hearing Laurel. They said they play this word, and to me it sounded like Laurel. And everyone and, and most people are hearing Lori uh, Laurel, and some people are hearing Yanny. And what it is is they, they took um, I think it was like a dictionary pronunciation of the word Laurel, like a computerized voice, and they played it. And some people heard Yanny, and some people heard Laurel. And I was hearing Laurel on TV, but then I heard it on NPR later that night when I was listening to the news, and then I was hearing Yanny. So, and then I, I watched a video about it and they took the uh, the recording and they played it at this, a lower frequency. This, okay, this is national news. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, it's this interesting is why, though. This is why I can't. <laughs> I thought it was really interesting though because I, and then when they changed the pitch, it was like a two minute video on YouTube. They they played it and I was hearing Yanny. It was just very muffled. Right. And then when they increased the pitch, I heard Laurel. Oh. I heard it really clearly. So it was, and they say it's, it has to do with the age of your ears and what frequencies you hear. So I imagine also if you have some hearing loss, well, you are going to hear one word over the other. Hmm. I had older ears. I think whatever it was, whatever I heard, it like said that my ears were older. But um, oh, I'm sure I've got I I'm oh okay oh Laura R with colors and watercolors. Lindsay says a max of six. Is there a similar rule for mixed media, or can you literally throw every color in every medium at the canvas? Uh, I throw, when I'm doing mixed media, I don't necessarily, I, th that rule is more for transparent watercolors because 
your one of your colors is the white of your paper so you have to be a little bit more cautious or you don't have to i mean there's no real rules i mean you do whatever you want to do but with mixed media i think anything goes but because anything goes you have to be we well, don't have to be but you you ought to be a little concerned with uh, your design elements and making sure that when you are using a color that you have a reason for it um so that it doesn't turn into a hot chaotic mess like so we, re we repeated patterns so that that none of those stenciling designs would seem chaotic um, but as far as color choice I would I wouldn't worry about it so much I mean mix what you can and try to just try to cross pollinate so like if I'm using that Prussian blue for a shadow I'm also using it on the pot and I'm gonna use it in the flowers I'm gonna make sure that I use it enough that I can um, that it not it's not gonna stick out like a sore thumb like why is that color there it doesn't it doesn't belong there it'll have a reason for being there I'm going to grab a little bit of that. I, and sometimes I like to take the pastels and scribble it onto a palette and turn it into paint so I have a little more flexibility with how fluid um, how fluid it is. Uh, Karna Starsong, what is the best media for beginners, in your opinion, and why? I'm a big fan of watercolor. Um, you can do it anywhere. It's slow wearing. Um, you don't really have to, you don't have any special materials like equipment um it's pretty benign as far as like toxicity and you can definitely f like and usually if you're a beginner you're starting off with student grade stuff then that's very benign um and you can do it anywhere and you can do it at any health level um there's like not toxic fumes that are going to make you sick uh, so that's my my preference and i think it's the best one to teach children um, or anybody that really wants to to learn art, I think watercolor. After drawing, watercolor is the best medium to to get going in. Um, okay, now I'm going to throw in some flower stems. I'm going to go right in and sketch them with my pastels. And I don't have exactly the color that I'd want, which would be kind of like a sap green color. So I'm going to just go in and sketch with whatever is closest, and then just layer up. Now these are bundled together with like a little twine, so and I like that, so I think I'll probably carry on that that uh, motif as well. So I'm layering some kind of green gold color, some looks like permanent green light. This is if they have names, yellow green it's called, and I'm going to go in with some darker green. You may feel some like drag when you're using these where you know your paint wants to lift up what's underneath uh, but don't worry you can always go and smooth that out and force them to blend with a brush later adding in some burnt sienna we've used burnt sienna several times so and it's very similar to that coppery color mix so you basically just want to try to um, cross pollinate your colors as much as you can um, and I think I am going to switch to some acrylic paints because I want to get some foliage in here and I know that um, when I go over it with other flowers I'm going to have trouble if I am trying to layer over too much pastel so I'm going to go right in with the sap green and I think I'm going to mix some gold into that because I think that would be pretty. And I think we can probably just stick with that half inch flat. Now I am going to wipe my brush off because I don't want to add water to my paint at this point because um, these color, that sap green is a pretty strong acrylic color so the brighter the color or the more vivid the color the more transparent it's going to be. If I pull, drag that out you'll see it's quite transparent so I don't want to thin that out. Adding this gold should make it a little more opaque because gold, the mica particles um, block the light, reflect the light so we don't see through it so much. So I'm trying to keep my paint on the bottom part of my brush and I'm going to drag up a bit of like a stem for some foliage and I'm just going to do some one stroke little leaves. So basically what that is, is you put your brush at an angle, you press and lift, press and lift, press and lift. Uh, M. Driggins, can you suggest a good brand for the metallic paints? Um, oh, there's a lot of good brands. These Jane Davenport's are nice, but they're only available at Michael's. Well, they might be on Amazon because I have seen a lot of her stuff on Amazon lately. And the, Michael's does have a website. Um, Americana has, uh, has some nice metallics and those you could find 
at um, any craft store, even Walmart, I think, has those. Oh, I like how we got two-tone there if you have a little bit more of the dark on one side. Um, uh, let's see. Martha Stewart has a decent metallic. They're not my favorite. And they're kind of expensive, to be completely honest. I'd probably say probably the best value would be the, the Americana, the folk art Americana. I, I've I've used the folk arts and Americanas, and their um, metallics are very nice. Yeah. Um, and they have a nice selection of metallic yes. colors. A lot of these are going to be hidden, so it's a great opportunity for you to practice your, um, your brush strokes. I like that two-tone leaf. I think that's kind of pretty. A lot, of, a lot of nice uh, fullness. So I can do one corner of my brush in gold, one in green, work it back and forth, and then keep on adding little leaves. And feel free to turn your, um, your work so that you're comfortable. This is a little big for me to turn on my desk, but... I think I'll put another little sprig going up here. And you can do this with watercolor. It'd be fun. Like a lot of times I'll doodle on an envelope with some watercolor before I mail it off. Okay. I think that's pretty good. I can always throw in a few other leaves here and there if I need to. And I see some carnations in this bouquet. And carnations are really fun to paint in um, in acrylics. I can't believe how much fun I'm having with acrylics because normally I'm not like... People were like, acrylics? <laughs> what? Someone call the authorities. <laughs> Lindsay's lost her mind officially. We thought she might have before, but... Now we have confirmation. If you just slide the board down a little before you start painting oh, the carnations, sure. it's just the ed top edge is starting to, it's, the board is just sliding again. Thank you. Yeah, I should have, um, oh, I wonder if I have a little poster putty I could stick under there. Ooh, that would be, I don't know what it is about poster putty. It always goes missing. I can never keep it handy. I try to stick a gob of it on the edge of my little roll spinner cart here, but I think I must have used it or something. Mm, shoot, I don't know where it is. If I had a needed eraser or something, I could just... I didn't need an eraser. I'll see if that will stick it down. That's right. That stuck to everything else in my spinner. It has to stick something. <laughs> Goodness. I think it's a, hopefully it will stick to that nonstick mat that I have it on. Oh, I think that'll work. There. Yeah, I don't think it's going to move. I think that's a good idea. Okay, so I think I want kind of a floppy round brush, and I am going to, I've got some bright red here, almost like a fire engine red, and I need to add a little bit of water to it. I'm going to use my spray bottle so I don't get that grimy rinse water in there. So if you're using like a, like a fluid acrylic, like um, any fluid acrylic or a craft acrylic, you won't need to add water to it, but I need to make these heavy body paints a little bit more fluid. And I am going to dip the tip of that into some white. And I am going to, I haven't done an incarnation in a long time, so hopefully this turns out well. Um, I'm going to wiggle my brush and drag it back. Wiggle, drag, wiggle, drag. And that is how you do the tip. I think I'm going to get a little more white in there. And I think I might need a less pointy ground, but let's really spread those bristles out. There we go. Just going to spread them out. There we go. And then for the bottom part of my brush, I'm actually going to grab another brush. And I'm going to grab some sap green. I think I need a little bit of yellow. Let's, oh, let's see, yellow ochre. That'll come in handy. Let's grab a little bit of that. And 
actually, I'm going to do phthalo green because I think sap's going to be a little too muddy on me. Do some phthalo and some yellow ochre. And I've got a filbert here, which is a, like a flat brush that's a little bit rounded. I'm very sloppily mixing colors together on my brush. I'm not, uh, if you can see that, uh, you can definitely see chunks of yellow ochre and bits of phthalo green. I'm going to, um, actually I'm going to start at the bottom and work up into the flower. So there we've got the, uh, the base of the flower and then I'm going to use a filbert on the side and pull in these little shapes there. Uh, Karna Starsong, can you add water to acrylics? Yes, they're water-based. And let's see, I'm gonna add a little bit of white. Just the little highlight on there because it's looking kind of boring. One more brush just so I can go in there and add some darker green little, little leaves. And I think carnations don't they have like those little little skinny little petals right underneath? Yes. And that's kind of coming off the hip of the flower. Yes. Right? The bottom of the hip. Well, see. closer to the pet like closer to the petals. Is it is it up higher? I thought I it was like kind of down off the stem, um, where the stem and the body. I my phone's at home charging. <laughs> Can't look it up today. I'm just gonna fake it. <laughs> it's mixed media, and it's yours. Like That's the true. Calvin and Hobbes quote I shared. People forget art isn't made for them. Yeah. I put that on my Facebook page and I was like, that's true. We all forget sometimes. We don't make art for other people. We make right. art for ourselves. So when you're loading up your brush for your carnation, instead of twisting it so you get a point, you're actually going to spread those bristles out. Okay. And then you're going to dip it into your contrasting color. For me, it's white. So look at what my brush looks like. It is mostly red and I've got the, and the bristles are splayed and I've got the white on the tip and we'll do another carnation over here. So I'm going to really wiggle that brush and look at me, I'm going to tip my brush back. Hopefully you can see that. I've got those bristles spread out, almost like a fan, and I'm going to drag it in. So look at that petal. Isn't that pretty? And I'm going to flip my brush over because I think I have enough on the other side to get another petal in there. I'm going to reload the same way. So I'm loading it like a flat brush, not like a round. Okay, those bristles are spread. I'm tipping it in the white. That's where it looks like almost like a fingernail, like a French tip fingernail. See that? And that is going to get on my canvas. I'm pushing it away from me, wiggling it, spread those bristles out, and then I'm going to twist it as I bring it forward. And you can do that again if you want more petals. You can just tip it in the white if you want to, and you can go in and do some contrasting petals that way. And then we'll go in with our greens here. Give it a little bit of a hip. And you really can't see much more than that because it's kind of tucked in with those flowers, but we can go with that smaller brush and do a few little highlights. shadows. I'm going to go in with the dark and just get a few little shadows in there because I feel like the green has got very monotone. And whoops. I went way too crazy with that highlight so I'm just going to mix up some more green and cover it up a little bit. All right. Now I like the, the carnation technique. I'm actually going to do a few little white flowers with that same technique over here. I'm not going to fill it in as much as this picture is because I don't want to cover up everything in the background. But I, I'm just going to do a few of those little flowers there, that same carnation technique, but just using white. 
or maybe white and a smidgen of that blue that I used in the background. It's kind of like a periwinkle color. Grab a little more white. You can also mix your, um, like I could scribble out some of that gelato color and use that as well. I don't have to use, um, I, you know, I can use that to tint my white if I wanted to. I'm going to do the white and the blue to start. Because that white's nice and thin. I really don't need to thin that purple since I'm using just a little bit of that purpley blue. Splay those bristles, tip it in white. And I'm just going to do a little cluster of those flowers up here, but I'm just going to make just a few little shapes like that. Uh, Joe Maisky, are raw paper and vellum the only safe surfaces to use embossing powder, or could you do it on a wood panel like this or on top of a non-porous surface? Um, I've used, I've embossed on wood before. It was fine. The only, it would, but with the acrylics, like, if you had a lot of acrylic, like, if you got it too hot. Oh, yeah, acrylic can blister, but that's if it's still wet. If you let the acrylic okay. dry first, you should be fine. Yeah. I mean had the right ink. Yeah, I probably use Versafine. Mm -hmm. Try it, see what happens. Versafine works really well, a Versamark, either of those. For some shadows, I'm taking some burnt sienna and adding it to that, that uh, periwinkle co looking color. And I'm just gonna flick up some, some shadows from the bottom of each of these little tufts. All this stuff's in back, so I'm really not too concerned with um, with details or anything. Then I'm going to take a small round. This is a number four round. Just going to load it up, and I'm going to twist. So I'm getting it in the puddle, but halfway down the bristles and twisting it away. And I'm just going to give it some little squiggly lines at the top of the flowers just to give it um, a little highlight and make it seem a little more dimensional. Okay, so my focal point, I think here will be a couple pink peonies, and one is pretty much a bud that's still in a tight bowl, um, tight ball, and the other one is a little more open, but honestly, I'm gonna have to go from my imagination a lot because there's really not a lot of detail here. Um, so they might end up being a little more fantasy flowers. We'll see how peony-ish they look when we're done, but we will do our best here. Um, I think I am going to make sure I have a uh, I'm afraid that crimson is gonna to be too bloody looking, so I think I'll sketch on with a pink pastel first. I want one to be up here. This is so fun, just to sketch on with a pastel. Get your sizes in there. Now this one's gonna be fairly closed, so. I might just be able to actually draw with a pastel and just use white paint. So we'll see how that, maybe that will work for us. Let's see, I, that, a, that white is really opaque so I might need to add more to it, but I'm gonna give it a try. This is a pretty firm brush that I'm using. Uh, so it should um, allow me to really stir up that uh, pastel. So have I scared anybody in chat yet? Are they? Uh, no, people are loving this. Oh, good. I'm hoping that we get some people that do some mixed media after seeing this and then posting it to the Facebook page. Oh, yeah. That would be awesome to see see what people come up with, what, oh, yeah. what this inspires. Definitely. And, I mean, you could totally do this in just acrylics or just pastel. You know, you don't have to do mixed media if, you're, if like, you like one or other of the medias better. I'm adding water in addition to paint on my brush because I really need help dissolving that pastel. I think I want to have some choppy edges up here because peonies are a multi-petal flower. They have tons of packed petals and I want to get that effect versus the closed bud up there. 
If you want to paint one, you can come to my house later after mine bloom and take some pictures. Oh, I have them in different growing? pinks. Yeah, yeah, I've got some in the garden. I've got, there's like three different pinks going oh, from dark to light. Nice. So you're welcome to come take some pictures if you want to paint one sometime. Oh, I might. Okay, now I can see that I was lifting up some of the color in the stems too because I didn't use acrylics for the stems, I used the um, the pastels. So you do, that's one thing you have to kind of think about when you're doing, when you're planning your mixed media layers. I'm just going to go in and sketch in with my pastel here a little bit. Uh, Michelle P, is it oil pastel or soft pastel that you used? This is a water soluble oil pastel, so it feels just like those crepas you probably used when you were a kid, um, but it is it has a water soluble binder. It is an oil, but it's a water soluble oil. And this is the Prima. There's also Mungio and um, Portfolio by Crayola. I'm not sure if they still, I, I'm pretty sure they still make the Portfolio by Crayola. And you might even be able to get those at like a big box store, like um, like Walmart or Target or something. These just sell them at Staples too. I'm not sure if they still have them or not. And I'm just gonna work back and forth until I'm happy with the blend, the level of blend and detail that I have. Now I don't think peonies have much for leaves, do they? There's no leaves for them in here, but what do they have for leaves, Sarah? Do you um, remember? Well, if they're on stems, the leaves are on the stems. Uh, and they're kind of long and yeah, long they're and long all, and, oblong, and um, they almost like yeah, they kind of have a reddish color on the edge. I might put a few of those in there. And something you can do too, if you feel that you're getting muddy because of something you have underneath, you can clean it out. So if I know that, oh, I've got, that's really bugging me, I've got that green in there, it's totally muddying up my flower, I can kind of wash it away. Just go in with a wet brush, activate it, and then blot it off. And look, you're back to your acrylic background. The thing I like about the oil pastels is that they have a nice opacity uh, opacity to them. Um, so like if you've, like I got, I got some of the Tim Holtz Distress Crayons when they first came out, um, and they're so transparent that they kind of, um, I didn't find that much use for them. I'm trying to use them more because I have them and I've put them out so I'll use them more, but um, honestly, I probably wouldn't have bought them if I'd known how transparent they are. Um, I really, I really prefer like the Prima pastels or the Crayola portfolio ones, which are super inexpensive. Now I'm just taking the white and hitting just kind of tips of petals very abstractly. Think like the, you know, like an impressionist. You're just trying to get the impression of these flowers. And if you do any line work, just keep in mind the direction that the flowers will be going in. this. And see, this is what I like. I like that kind of, it's kind of sloppy, but it's, you can tell what it is, but you've got some contrast. That's really what, um, what I want there. Okay. I think I'd like some little yellow flowers or little purple flowers or something. Maybe like some little pansies. Maybe over here, violets or something. I am going to try just doing a really easy little pansy or violet. I'm going to double load my brush. I'm going to do half in white and half in purple. And I'm going to hope for the best because I haven't done a pansy in a long time, but I can remember what they look like pretty well. And pansies kind of have a, and I'm going to go back to front because acrylics are opaque. I'm just going to kind of wiggle my brush and get this back, roundish back petal there. And this is kind of like a, um, uh, a decorative painting technique. If you've ever done one stroke painting, like the Donna Dewberry style, this is um, that same technique. 
and we're going to do another one in front. Just rainbow that brush around using the whole flat of the brush. Um, I'm reloading because I feel like my brush is getting too, the paint's getting too transparent. I'm going to do it again over here. Just rainbow it around. If you if your paint skips, you can work it back. Okay, and there's two more petals in front. I'm going to try to make them a little bit smaller, though. Then I'm just going to take some white and just give it a couple little marks like that. And then I think I'll go in my yellow pastel and do a little bit of yellow on the inside of that flower. Got some pansies at the greenhouse this week. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Does this look reasonably like a pansy? It does. I think I might be missing a leaf. I'm not sure. But <laughs> I can I can add a little to that after it dries. I think I'm gonna put a few little random leaves in there because we got one that's pretty detailed, almost a little too detailed I think. But we can mess that up a little bit. Um, but I'm gonna just put a couple little random purple leaves in there, just sticking out like there might be like a little cluster of them. Try to re repetition again so that we don't have a hot mess. The one thing you could do, which I probably should have done, is you can always practice a flower, like on your palette paper or on any a scrap of paper or something, just to make sure you know what you're doing before you commit it to your painting. The, I mean, the good thing about acrylics and a lot of mixed media techniques is that you can layer over them if you don't like what you create. Oh, I think, I think I'll do some baby's breath. And I think I have a little, the, nice, the fun thing I have to say about acrylic painting is that there's so many fun little specialty brushes. And, ah, this is what I was looking for, Deerfoot Stippler. This one is a really fun little brush and it's just, it's, it's a round brush, but it's cut at an angle. So it kind of looks like a deer hoof. And um, that's really fun for doing baby's breath or Queen Anne's lace or any sort of little texture like that, any sort of foliage texture. I'm just gonna do, a little bit of that. Look how pretty. It's just so dainty. You can actually do lilacs with that. I think really pretty Ooh. too. Lilacs are starting. My lilac bush is starting to finally blossom a little bit. Oh, it's blossoming already? Just a little. It's like nothing's up, but the buds are coming. And I think I'll do a little bit over here to balance it out. And I'm, I'm like not using any pressure here. This is super, super just a whisper. Annette Fournier, when you use the pastel over the wet acrylic, do you have to shave the acrylic off the top later? Oh no, you can just wipe it off. It's not, uh, it can't really bond to that uh, pastel stick that well, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt anything. Just wipe it when you're done, you, you'll be fine. Wipe it next time you use it. It's not going to hurt anything. I'm going to use a liner brush. A liner is a brush that has long bristles. Like that, it's a round, fairly long, skinny bristles, and you need to thin your paint down when you use it. I'm going to grab some... Um, is this a brown? I, I thought I was using burnt sienna, but this is actually says it's raw umber, but it looks pretty much... It looks just like burnt sienna, so use either, either or. I'm grabbing some paints I haven't used uh, ever. <laughs> Let's just be honest, ever. <laughs> ever. Actually, Soho acrylics, I, they're fine. I've, um, the, some of these colors, I mean, these little tubes are the Soho acrylics by Jerry's. Very affordable. I should have made this a Jerry sponsored video as I'm talking about Jerry's enough in this one. <laughs> oh well. Um, and so then you just want to load it up with kind of an inky consistency of paint, give it a twist, and then um, you can just throw in a few little stems. Now I took the, um, well it said raw umber, but it looks like a burnt sienna to me. 
I took that, mixed it with some violet, mixed it with some green, because I wanted to have some, it was too red looking and too bright for the, for the brown that I wanted, so I just wanted to kind of darken it up. And that's what I did. I'm actually not going to be able to do my little, um, I was going to draw the little rope that was bundling these together, but um, I'm not going to be able to. So maybe I even will throw a few stray stems. So, because I think it kind of looks a little weird that they're all bundled up in there if you can't see the string bundling it. So I'm just going to do that. I need a stiffer brush though. These are, the liners are really good if you have really inky loose paint, but if your paint is, um, if your, if your paint's thick, it doesn't work very well. I actually like to use flats for, for stems because you can just kind of use a chisel edge and it's pretty easy. And while I have this flat brush out and a bunch of green, might be a little wet. I'm just going to blot my brush a little bit. I'm going to just do a few maybe leaves of the peonies here. Any place you have something you're not crazy about the way it looks, you can throw a little leaf. Holy crap! That's what? a giant spider! Oh, really? He's walking away from me. He's probably heading over here. <laughs> Holy moly! He's okay, still... now I gotta see it. He's like... Oh, wow! That's a doozy. Woo! <laughs> He's getting some good feeding down here. What is that spider? That's why we don't have any mosquitoes. <laughs> That's why there's no other bugs down here. He's eating all of them. That's right. She? Well, you know... I did stir a bunch of stuff up. I uh, Jason got me an inversion table for Mother's Day because I um, I've been talking about having one and and I had this habit of using a right like a rice bag on my back and yeah. I was watching this news program and they were saying that if you do that too much the heat causes these it can cause these burns which I've had one on my back before yes and it can give you cancer it can give you skin cancer if you keep if you do it repeatedly hmm. it can change the like the it can mutate the cells and so i was freaking out because i love to use my rice bag um and so and i have some lower back issues from time to time and so he got me an inversion table for mother's day so i was like cleaning and rearranging and and I think I stirred up all kinds of stuff. Oh, you probably did. <laughs> I moved the steps that go outside. Yeah. And, and I swept under that. Man, it was like, because so much leaves, so many leaves yes. had blown in there. It was like, I think it had been composting. Probably. <laughs> oh, man. Throw so, it throw it on the ground. Throw it in some where you grow some veggies or whatever and see what happens. Seriously, some fertile nutrients. I could have been growing mushrooms. Ooh. Uh, maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe there was I some I probably growth. could have. <laughs> I, I've, I've used the inversion table a couple times, but I have to be careful because it can make you kind of nauseous. Okay. You know, hanging upside down like that. But I'm totally expecting I'm going to be a couple inches taller when I'm all done. It's going to stretch out my back. Out. Get all stretched out. Um, let's see. And I feel like I want to do something to those little purple, light purple flowers up there. So the thing about mixed media that I've noticed is that it's very much... Um, you're very much kind of just going with the flow and, um, and doing what you think it needs to be done. You're not necessarily like if I hold the finished, like if I hold that to this, I mean, you can clearly see that I was basing it on that, but the flowers are very different and the way I filled it in was a little bit more, um, imaginative than what's really there. So, you know, just, just trust yourself and have fun with it. Uh. This will give me some nice um, contrast between that peony bud and what I have going up there. Give me the um, impression of a bunch of little flowers instead of just one right big blob. Mm. And I like that color, so maybe I'll do a couple little, just, uh, you know, just tiny little leaves with that color. Not a good angle to paint those, but all 
right, now I'm going to go back to the pot again and give those flowers a rest. I might come back to them. I might realize they're fine after I'm done. But let's look at the pot and see what that needs. I'm going to go in and add some highlighting, and I think I'm going to go right in with that white acrylic paint. I think I have enough right there to do the trick. And I'm just going to add it where I see the brightest areas. And I can add a little water and I can work it into the pastel so I get a nice blend. And this will help seal in that, that pastel too. Adding more water to that white so that I don't have it quite as bold. And I'm just going to work it over here. And I think I might try to mix up a little bit of that color. Um, maybe some phthalo green. Try some of that blue in there, see what I get. I want to try to mix it from what I've already used so I don't have anything too different at this stage in the game, but I think that's pretty close. And it will mix with what I have underneath. Oh, that's pretty close. I like that. This is going to hang up in my kitchen. So just mix whatever, like, whatever colors you used to, you know, make deeper shadows and adjust where you need to. I think I'm going to flip this around and look at it upside down to make sure that it's symmetrical, though, because I can get kind of confused when I'm looking at something from the same angle the whole time. Uh, Penny Cormier, why do you keep your brushes in the water during watercolor tutorials? Is it a holdover from acrylic work? I think that I try not to keep it in the water when I'm doing watercolor, um, but it's, it probably is just a bad habit from acrylics where I'd want them in the water till I washed them. And then I end up like getting distracted and forgetting about them and having them sit in the water overnight. Um, it's a very bad habit. Uh, so I, yeah, I think that's it. Probably came from teaching acrylics at the senior center, and then you know having everything stay in water until I had a chance, a breather to to uh, clean them. Totally a bad habit. Don't do it. Oh, there was that nice dark, that Prussian blue. Let's use some of that. Mix that right in our acrylics. I don't like about acrylics is how it dries and then it feels like everything just dragging that you're trying to paint on there and that's the kind of what I'm getting right now. But I don't think my my vase is too far off. I think the vase is fine. I think I'm gonna go in with a pastel just so I can have uh, more of a sketched look and since it is starting to drag I don't like the look of that dry brush where I'm, if I'm not going for texture I don't like the way that I get that dry brush look although I think I might be scratching off more than anything when I'm using this white one I 
scraped back to the to the canvas on that, so I'm going to have to go back and do my brush. Uh, I need a little bit more paint. There's the color. I was using this uh, pale periwinkle color and phthalo green and white, so that's what I'm going to mix up again. And I'm going to get a pretty chunky amount of it because I want to kind of just lay it down and then call it good. watercolors that can always just live on your palette until you're ready to use them. You have to keep squirting out acrylics. So that's the other reason that I don't do acrylics very often. I'm impatient. Alright, now let's put on some gobby juicy paint here. make a mistake in your and your base just keeps getting fatter and fatter. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ah! That's alright, we'll just paint some more flowers around it. Nobody will know. Seriously. Where's that stencil? You got stencils on the thing. Got stamps. Oh yeah, I did get some stamps too. Uh, R. Fatima Joffrey, how does turning it upside down help? Helps you look at it with fresh eyes. So if something is, is crooked or off, you'll notice it right off the bat when it's upside down. Grabbing a new brush, that one is desperately in need of cleaning. Alright, I'm just loading up some of this lighter color. I might need, even need some more white. Too much stuff laying on my palette, I can't use all my mixing space. I'm just going to load up this, this corner because I've got the, now the bottom of my bucket has gone soft. I'm trying to recapture the crispness of it. some sharp details so that it doesn't look too mushy because I need the contrast of the hard vase next to the um, next to the contrast of the soft flowers. I'm just going to throw some highlights on it because I think if I mess with it too much, I'm just going to regret it. Kind of want to put some rust on it though. You should. Yeah, do I it. I'll, I think I'll do that. I'll make some chippy rusty paint. Just want to get that little ridge on the bottom. Okay. Oh, that's that's better. I like that a little a little sloppy, a little messy. But you don't have to do that if you prefer a more refined look. Do what you like best. All right. Let's make some rust. I'm gonna use. Um, oops. Let's get that in frame there. I'm gonna use brown and copper. I actually think I have enough brown on my. Well, I'm gonna give it a little bit more because I always think I have plenty and then I run out. And I think I'm actually going to grab a cut-up kitchen sponge for this. I'm going to dip it and bring it out because 
top sponges work better wet, wet and wrung way out. And it gives you a little time to clean, like where this has been sitting on my palette. If I had not wet it, um, the sponge would be ruined. I would have to cut off the area that I'd use. So that way I have the leeway and the time to be able to fix it. So I've got this brown that I've mixed with a little bit of green because that brown has a lot of red in it. With the green, it tones it down a little bit. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that copper so it's got a little bit of a metallic accent. And I'm gonna think what would rust on this. What would probably rust first would be the spout. Uh, and edges where the water would have dripped bottom of the thing where it, where it could have been sitting oh I like the rust is it giving it that that little oomph for you it's giving me that oh look I could fix every mistake that I've made in this little can <laughs> I mean, I intended to put rust on this all along, and, uh... Oh, it was totally planned out. Look how well my plan is coming to shape. Okay, now I'm going to grab a small round, and I'm going to do a little bit on the, on the handle where the paint could have been rubbed off. It would make sense to have some rust there. And I feel like I need some more shadow under there. I don't feel like that brown, that blue that we put originally is quite enough. So, what? I quite enough. <laughs> I'm famous someday when people are, uh, that'll be my happy little trees. When, when your kids are auctioning off all your yeah. work that yeah. they've discovered in the basement that yeah. nobody knew about before. Just mixing colors here until I get a nice dark because I want my shadow to be related to what I've already been painting. I need a little bit of blue in there. Let's see what blues have I used. I don't think I used any thalo blue. Maybe I'll just scribble this pastel, this Prussian blue. I'll use that in there to darken a little bit. I want to add it strongest near the uh, pot, and then I want to kind of feather it out. adding that Prussian blue that we originally used, it's just going to help it, um, help it blend in a little bit more. Shadows, we don't want to stand out. We want shadows to be very backgroundy. And I put some water in my brush. I'm just kind of dragging out the edges. It's okay if it gets transparent because I've got those cool stencil designs to show through. this? Do I want some more stenciling? What do you guys think at home watching? More? Or? Do you think it's done? Do you think done? I should add something? I think it's done. I think if you just keep adding, it's going to get over. Look my stencils that I grabbed already. And stamps. Oh, I had this chicken wire stamp. And I have this Flourish. Oh, oh, I think we might be adding more. And I have this uh, Queen Anne. Oh, I've got this Queen Anne's lace. Oh. That might be pretty if I did that with like white or copper or something. Or the flourish. The flourish is pretty. 
Where's the? You know what? I think I'm gonna try the chicken wire because that's not a lot. So if it is horrible, then it's not. You know, I can wipe it off. It's not gonna be that big of a deal. So I think I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna use the back side of one of these sponges. So I'm just gonna flip it over. And um, I think I'll do copper and gold because I think the gold will stand out a little bit more. But I've used the copper more, and I still have some, so I don't want to waste it. I'll use both of them. This stamp, I'm not, this stamp is um, either Lost Coast Designs or Rubbernecker. I think it's Lost Coast Designs. So you definitely want to make sure that you clean your stamps good when after you use them with acrylics. Um, I just take them to the sink, I scrub them with an old toothbrush, and then blot them off. Try not to get the foam wet though, because that's not good for your stamp. Now, you want to avoid getting hard edges when you're doing this, so um, what I do is I kind of curve the stamp, so I will just kind of press it and curve it, but I won't let those edges go down too much because I just want to get that little bit of, that little bit of uh, pattern there, a little more gold I think. I'm always surprised at how much acrylic paint you use on a project. <laughs> so different than watercolors. <laughs> You're doing watercolors, you give somebody a tiny little dinky bit of paint for a watercolor class and they're looking at you like, I need more. Yeah, this like, isn't no. going to be enough. You're stingy. <laughs> I like that. It's just a little, little bit of texture. And it's country. You know, I think this kind of has a bit of a country. Oh, yeah. Farmhouse absolutely. country. And then we did do some gold in, that, in the background to begin with, so I think that kind of is nice. All right, I think I'm going to call that done. What do you guys think? I, I agree. Okay. Let's see, are we in frame? Have a look at that. I will take a photo of it and put it on my blog. I might do a whole new blog post because um, it did get a little, uh, I, I didn't really have a plan on today's blog post and I, I've written about all kinds of stuff. So I might just do a whole new one. I, I feel like I want some more sketchiness in these flowers. That's the thing about Expedia. It's hard to tell when to stop because there's so many more little things you can do, but I think I'll, I think I'll call that good. Well, but again, because it, you can come back and add mm -hmm. a few things if you decide. Yeah, totally. All right, guys, thank you so much. I will uh, uh, edit the video description to put in the materials that I used, and um, I'll add that to my blog as well, so you can refer back to either of those places. If you're looking for something specific, keep in mind, some of these stencils and stamps and stuff might be discontinued, but you know, just find whatever you have that will work closest and you're going to be fine. I mean, everyone's is going to look different. That's the point of art. Everybody should, nobody should be an exact copy of anybody else's. So, um, so there's nothing wrong with that. Do you have anything to add or any other questions? Uh, before yeah. I go? Uh, Lena Rose, what books can you recommend learning how to paint flowers with watercolor? Oh, my favorite watercolor instruction book is no longer in print, but sometimes you can get lucky on Amazon and find a used copy, but it's called The Essential Floral Painter's Hand. But let me see if I can find it. I have it. If you just give me a second, guys, I think I have it right over here somewhere. Uh, I might not, but I, I know I have it, but I don't know. If it's, it's probably upstairs. It's I can't remember the author, but it's called The It's It's a tiny book. It's only about... I say about six by five or so, and it's uh, it's called the like essential flower painters pocket handbook or something like that. But that's a that's a really good one. Anna Mason's got a few books too. If you really like highly detailed botanical work, but I haven't read her books. My sister has it, and I was leafing through it. It's really beautiful. Um, but I like the kind of looser interpretation of that little pocket flower the flower painter pocket book. Maybe that's what it's called. It's it's a, I'll, you know what, I'll find it, I'll put it in the video description. <laughs> and you'll also be adding on all the things that you use at the, you know, yes, later. Yes, absolutely. So people had questions, yeah. so. Okay, all right, we're all great. caught up. Okay, thank you guys so much for joining us, even though you didn't know what we were going to do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time. Happy crafting.